Good morning, and welcome to today's Cichlids and Coffee live stream. I am Ben Ochart, as you probably know, and I am happy to see you here. Let's see. A couple quick adjustments here, and we'll be good to go. Take a quick look here and see and see who's here. Dave Hubbard comes in strong. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. Uh, comes in with a super chat. For those of you who don't know what super chats are, that's where uh, you can throw a little a little dough at the channel, uh, keep it keep it rolling. And uh, last week we had Jerry Martin and Reps Reps J seventy four. And uh, GP and um, Mobile Alabama RN jumped in with some super chats. And it looks like uh, Dave jumped in early. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that, my friend. And uh, hey, Candy, glad you're here. And what do we got here? Whiskers and Aquatics. Love that name. And uh, Plural Singularity. Love that name, too. I remember a Star Trek that talked about Plural Singularity. So, um, let's go ahead and uh, get underway, and let me check out a few things here. Okay, very, very good. So, um, boy, what a time we're living in, huh? I hope you folks are all doing well and healthy and not getting cabin fever and uh, in the middle of all this COVID-19 stuff. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we actually found, uh, found a beach up in Northern California where they're letting, letting people just go out and walk around. And, and, uh, and uh, we're going to actually head, head up there next week. So uh, I'm not exactly positive if we're, we're going to have a live stream or not next, next Saturday. I might do one right from the beach. And, uh, but it's, uh, you know, you, you use safe distancing blah 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 you know you're you're they're, they're letting folks out and enjoy the fresh air and which is probably in my opinion sunshine fresh air exercise probably the best thing we could all do right now and uh, as long as we do it sensibly so um we are certainly living in some interesting times and uh, like i've said in several of the uh, recent uh recent live streams this is uh certainly a time where our fish keeping is probably helping us to stay sane and uh, giving us something to do while we're indoors. And that is the topic of today's live stream, you know, things that we can actually uh, get done that we've probably been wanting to get done and haven't been able to, but now a lot of us have the time. Now, a lot of you uh, who work in uh, what has been deemed essential areas, I guess, th those of you who are working uh, full-time, in some cases even more than full-time, so... Um, this may, this may not, uh, you may not have time for the things I'm going to suggest, but you might want to take them under consideration anyway. So uh, let's see, we got more folks jumping on here. Let's take a quick look at the, uh, let's see here. Anthony Fagan, hello, Anthony. Scott Burgess, Ray Sander, hello, folks. Mike's Aquarium, hey, Mike. Donald Fish Vibes, Duke City. Welcome back, Duke City. All right, very, very good. So um, go ahead and share, you, know, you can take the, uh, you can take this, um, the link and share this with everybody you know all over the world and uh, send it out to your entire email list, whether they're into fish or not. And, <laughs> and since I'm plugging it, I, I, hope, I hope you're drinking out of one of these cups, one of these cichlids and coffee cups. And I hope you're having a strong cup of coffee like me. Unless you're in the UK, I think it's the evening over there, and we do get a lot of folks from the UK, and I think uh, people watch from there while having a beer, which I guess is okay. So uh, if you're in some faraway place, go ahead and mention it in the chat. I'd love to hear about that. Let me see. Oh, we have a mom from uh, Cape Town, South Africa. Wow, that is awesome. 
Anthony Fagan from New York City. Hey, Anthony. Love New York City. Been there many, many times. And uh, I heard things are flattening out there. And, uh, you know, I hope that's truly the case. Let's see here. Nikki Guzman, anybody here have a water softener system? You know, there was a water softener system installed in, th in the house I'm in right now. And I had it removed because I have cichlids. I want hard water. I don't want, I do not want soft water. And so I had it pulled out. And uh, we get, we get, um, we get almost ideal cichlid water here in Southern California, high pH, lots of calcium, lots of magnesium, very hard water. So, um, you know, I had that pulled out. So at any rate, <clears throat> so let's, let's talk a little bit about what's been going on. But before we do that, how about we do that little uh, fancy transition I love so much. Let's go. All right. High technology. So uh, <laughs> we've had uh, we've had some interesting stuff going on. I had Adam C. If you folks don't know who Adam C. is, check out his channel on YouTube. He is truly one of the good guys. Uh, uh, just a j just a good guy who who talks about fish and keeps uh, uh, you know has had some setbacks. He had a, a, a massive uh, seal failure in one of his um, you know one of the bottom seals. Uh, gave out one of his aquariums on the bottom and uh, bounced back from that and uh, now has this beautiful, I think it's a 300 gallon uh, cichlid tank that's just absolutely gorgeous. And uh, definitely check out his channel, Adam C. But he participated in bad advice, uh, plus ammonia equals fish death and, uh, you know, equals death. And, uh, you know, such a common, uh, such a common thing. You go and you, you pick up a tip here and a tip there and you think you've got it right, and um, you know, and you you you, you want to have you want to have that great looking tank, uh, yes, you know, right away. And um, and he made some of the classic mistakes. It's almost like uh, it's almost like a rite of passage, you know, that that we all go through. It's our sort of uh, our, our fish keeping gang rite of initiation, you know, our our initiate our gang initiation. <laughs> you have to, you bring home a bunch of fish. You you put them in too soon. You get the ammonia spike, and and uh, they die off. And then you either give up, you walk away from the hobby, like unfortunately so many people have uh, when that happens, or you you kind of pick yourself up and and go. I still love. I still would love having an aquarium in my house. So let me see if I can figure out what happened, and then the learning process starts. Now, my idea is that every, every fish store should have a link that whenever they, they find out that a person is buying their first tank, they actually tell them, go, especially in today's world, right, where we have this technology, it wasn't available to us as recently as 15, 20 years ago. We didn't have this type of uh, you know, technology as readily and as widespread. But they should just give the new buyer a link and go, here, when you get home, hit, you know, Follow this link, watch this short video, and uh, it gives a person right there in their home an orientation, a quick step-by-step -step on how to put the stuff together, and uh, I think we would have an expansion in the hobby if, if some kind of a resource, or even have a chair or a couch and a, small, you know, and a screen up in the store and, and, and bring the person over and go, here, is this your first tank? Okay, good, here, take five minutes, watch this and sit them down and give them a, an orientation and then hand them a piece of paper that has a checklist on it and uh, and you know help them get to get started that way because so many so many of us including me have uh, have have gone through that sort of rite of passage that sort of initiation into the hobby where we we suffered that that big mass die off of the of the fish and so <clears throat> Fortunately, a lot of us get, get back on the horse. You know, fortunately, a lot of us go, all right, well, what's my takeaway? And uh, <clears throat> so let's see here. Uh, so we had that going on, and I thank Adam C. Adam C., if you're on this live stream, thank you so much for participating in that. If you watch it later, uh, thank you so much. 
and it was very nice of you to send me a video. I also had a couple of videos about uh, the love-hate relationship that seems to be going on with canisters, and uh, you know they they I, I think they're they're good for filtration. I think that the um, the downside, of course, is that if they do leak uh, because of where you're you know where you're pulling water from, you are going to get a lot of water on your floor. And um, this, I, they were probably the two best tips, the two best tips I got uh, from you, from you folks, the, uh, the viewers, was one, drill a hole just below the water line on the intake. So um, your intake, as it, you know, as it goes over the back of the tank, and, uh, you know, and, and let's say here's the water line, right about right here right below the water line just just uh, do a uh, you know, just drill a small little hole and what will happen is that if you if you do have a, um, a leak and the water level goes down just you know goes down a bit the it's gonna take in air and break you know it'll break the siphon and you'll only get a limited as opposed to as opposed to getting all of the water all the way down to the intake to the bottom of the intake uh, because uh, some people said, well, well, we'll move your intake higher, but I like pulling water from the bottom of the tank because that's part of that oxygenation and circulation that I like to create with canisters. So I don't want to pull water from the middle or top of the tank. I want to pull water from the bottom, uh, not the bottom bottom, but from a few inches off the bottom. And um, But with a small hole just below the water line, uh, you know, a small hole, and occasionally, you know, put a toothpick in it just to make sure it doesn't get plugged up. Uh, and and um, that way you'll break a siphon if you have a leak and the water line starts to go down because water is pouring out. That was the one tip that I thought was great. And I was I'm using that on, on, the, on the sump uh, to break a back siphon in the event of a pump failure. So I am doing that already with my sump. I didn't think about doing that with uh, canisters. And the other tip that came up, which I think a lot of you already know, is to just put a small uh, Rubbermaid uh, that that about you know maybe half the height of the canister around the canister, so that uh, just a Rubbermaid container that it sits in. And one person said that you can buy those with wheels on them, and uh, it it just makes it real easy to to pull it out from under a cabinet, so it, it helps to offset the the weight of a canister, which sometimes makes it difficult to work with, especially. When you get into bi the bigger units like the uh, the, the uh, Sun Sun 3000, the big Eheims, the the FX sixes from Fluval, those are big heavy units, and if you're trying to pull them out from under a cabinet, uh, they can be a bit of a challenge. So inside this Rubbermaid, a small Rubbermaid, either with wheels or maybe you know just the fact that it's a, a, a plastic bottom, it slides out real easy, and if you did start to get a leak, it would be caught in the Rubbermaid. And so uh, it would be caught in the in the container. So, two great tips that came from uh, the folks that watched those videos on the love the love hate uh, relationship <laughs> that exists with canisters. And uh, I, I've uh, I've gotten that 704B uh, that I replaced the ring on the O ring. I've I've gotten that one uh, up and I mean, I've gotten that one fixed and able to run, but I still haven't hooked it up. It's sitting in the cabinet behind me, and it's not not actually being used. I, it's I seem to be getting a great uh, a great job from just the sump, so um, I might just put that 704B on the um, on the 100, uh, where I have a very heavy um, I like to call it well stocked <laughs> a well stocked tank in that 100, and so. Uh, and I am looking to thin that out. So if you're in Southern California and you'd like, you want some cichlids, uh, reach out to me, ben.o.cichlid. And um, I have a few in there that I, that I'm willing to either sell or give away, uh, just to thin out, thin out the herd a little bit, you know, thin out the stock. So uh, reach out to me, and uh, I'll throw a few fish at you. So um, that's what's been going on with the with the release on videos and what else has been going on I have I have a little bit of um, I guess some bad news uh, I hate to share bad news but it's all part of the hobby 
uh, Vincent finally lost the battle with whatever it was that he was battling and, um, and succumbed. I, um, I had tried numerous regimens of, um, you know, numerous regimens of medications, a lot of water, you know, uh, definitely some, you know, water. I kept his, his, his circumstances very, very uh, perfect and pristine, you know, water changes, things of that nature. And, um, you know, he didn't make it. He had, he was in a constant uh, battle and uh, you can see him, you, you can see, uh, I'll go ahead and bring, I'll pull him up. You can see him right up here on the, on the screen. I had a fish rehab, uh, rehab video that I put out about him. And uh, so, you know, he was always kind of, he was kind of, kind of touch and go for, for probably six weeks, maybe two months. And, um, you know, so I, I gave it a shot, tried to, you know, bring him back. He started eating. He started feeling out a little bit, but he continued to get uh, unusual uh, things on, you know, on his scales, uh, unusual like uh, spots on his, you know, on his body that were, it was an ick at one point. I actually tried, I even put cord and ick attack in there. And uh, so anyway, he, he finally succumbed. And then of course, we all know that my uh, plastic acromus, Johnson and I, was at the end of his life. You saw him last week. Uh, you saw him in some of my videos. Uh, he was old. He was an old fish, uh, and in his prime, you can see, you can see him here. He was he was a, a spectacular fish in his prime. Beautiful fish, a Placid Acromus Johnsoni, and uh, grew very fast. Uh, was was a, a, a you know a good size Placid Acromus, and uh, came up to the 150 and, and was able to live with the big boys. And, um, but you know, he got old and, uh, finally, finally passed away. And so it was a little bit of a, a little bit of a rough week, uh, with regards to fish, but uh, neither one of them was a surprise. Uh, it wasn't like the uh, Ruby red, uh, a few months, maybe a month or two ago where it, it seemed like it came out of nowhere. These were both fish that I knew were, were, um, in the middle of some type of a bout. Uh, some type of a struggle, and or were or were at the end of their life, and so that that kind of goes with the territory, and uh, so I'm not I'm not uh, I'm I'm a bit saddened, a bit uh, upset, but but uh, expected it. Uh, so it, it's uh, at any rate that that was that also has been going on now on a positive on a positive note because I like to stay positive. Um, we also had uh, we hit a milestone on the channel. And this, this is a, a big shout out to you, uh, to all of you who sub and watch. And a lot of you who watch and don't sub, a lot of my views are actually from people that are not subbed. So uh, if you're watching right now, uh, hit, that, hit that sub button and, uh, <laughs> and hit that bell. <laughs> uh, it's so it feels funny to plug yourself. You know? But anyway, the channel hit 24K. I love that number, 24K. And uh, we went gold. And uh, thank you so much to all of you out there who uh, hit that sub button and have moved the subs up dramatically. I think there were 1,900 new subscribers in a 28-day period, which is, I think, a record. It's a record for the channel. And uh, so I thank all of you out there who share, who share the channel, who, who have subbed. And uh, for those of you that are watching, uh, hit that button now. Let's, let's keep that momentum going. I think it's great. So... So it wasn't an entirely uh, negative week. There were there were some there were some plus points and some positive things in it as well. So let's talk a little bit about what's coming up. And um, we have uh, two more installments, two more installments to the uh, to the mistakes made by uh, you know major mistakes by major YouTubers and. Uh, uh, Paul, the inventory king up in the up in Washington, he sent me a video, and the the title of that video you can see the you can see the thumbnail there, is uh, deep cleaning, uh, deep death, uh, deep death. So uh, he's going to tell you a story about what happened with him, and uh, and again you're gonna you're gonna it's gonna seem like a reoccurring theme that we see in the hobby, and. Uh, and his takeaway and his conclusions, what he learned, how he handled it, uh, is uh, was 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 pretty cool. You'll like that. And that video is going to drop uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning at um, what at midnight Sunday uh, morning. And um, 
And then on Tuesday will be the final installment, which is, uh, you know, my friend uh, Zenzo Tozawa, uh, whose channel is doing great. You should check out Inventory King, of course. Check out Paul Inventory King. Check out his channel. Um, and uh, also check out uh, Zenzo Tozawa, Tozawa Tanks. And uh, he's just a great guy. And, um, and he's, uh, his channel is growing great. He worked on a project with Corey. They redid his fish room. It looks wonderful. And he's uh, he sent me the video clip from his fish room. So you'll see it there. And uh, he's going to talk about uh, uh, something that we've all done, I think. When it comes to you know picking fish, adding a fish to our collection, uh, he uh, he's going to talk about what happened, and so I think you'll like it. Uh, tune in for that. That's going to be Tuesday, Tuesday morning at again at midnight that morning at midnight, and uh, I guess uh, twelve oh one it'll it'll drop, and then after that I'm not sure really what I'm what I'm going to do. I, I have a few projects in mind, and uh, you know we'll uh, we'll we'll go from there. And uh, let's see here. So let's take let's get let's get right into today's topic. And uh, today's topic is the ten projects while under lockdown. And these are these are things that you know we all have things that we've been wanting to do, and um, and we we haven't quite gotten gotten to it yet. And uh, you know we all have a list. You, you, you probably have a list. I have a list. If you have something that you've been wanting to get to and you haven't been able to, and uh, maybe you have been able to during this this uh, odd time that we're in, uh, or maybe you're planning to, share it below. I'd like to hear what your, uh, your to-do list, what your, uh, uh, what your lockdown list is. But, uh, but we have, um, I, I put a list together of things that, that I think would be uh, good to do, and, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do them all. Uh, I, I might, but I was just thinking, okay, well, now that I have time, what would be a what would be some things that that could be done now? And uh, so I just sort of thought up a list and and uh, wrote it down, and uh, and I put out videos about some of these. And uh, so number one. And, and, and you folks comment on these. You tell me if it's something you do regularly, if it's something you put off. Um, but number one on the list is clean your hoses. Uh, how many of you actually regularly uh, remove the hoses and, and actually clean them? And uh, I, I try and do it, you know, maybe three, four times a year. It, it's a bit of a chore. It's a bit of a task. And I have a, a um, I have a very long pipe cleaner, a flexible pipe cleaner that I picked up on eBay, and uh, it, you know you just push that thing through, and it is amazing how much gunk, how much you know crap actually just comes out of those hoses. I mean, and the, you know the uh, the attachment piece, the actual place where that that attaches the hose to the filter, uh, you know whether it's the down pipe in a HOB and a hang on back, you know, re taking out the down pipe and, and cleaning that out. Uh, how often do you do that? You know, some people just put it off forever and those, and, and those things get really gunked up. This might be a good time to clean your hoses. Um, here's another one. How about a, a, a cleaning under, under the lid of your tank? And, you know, some folks talk to me about wanting to get better lighting. They want to get better lighting, but but underneath the lid, they've allowed a lot of um, a lot of algae. In some cases, uh, black, dark green algae and muck. A lot of mulm or muck muck to build up, and uh, and so it's actually blocking the light. It's actually reducing your 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 illumination of your tank. And so you know, remove the lid, uh, give that thing a good wipe down, and then put it back on. And you'll be surprised. Your, your tank will actually look brighter because you'll have a, a cleaner. A cleaner light, uh, less less uh, block, blocked light. How many of you actually clean your lids? Take the lids off, or or, or flip them up, and really give them a good cleaning with a sponge, uh, you know, with one of the algae algae uh, sponges. This is a good thing to do. Um, here's another one that you can do. You can. Uh, some of you talk to me about backgrounds. 
This is a uh, Universal Rocks background behind me, and uh, that you can see here on the uh, a little bit better on the uh, fish cam. That's a Universal Rocks uh, Universal Rocks background, and uh, I give it an occasional scrub with a bristle brush just to clean it up a little bit. The Pleco does most of the work on it, and uh, but. Some of you have been wanting to get a background. This might be a good time to get a background and install one because it, it is a bit time intensive. Uh, moving all the gravel forward, dropping it in, rolling it out, and not stressing out the fish too much. Uh, also, it might be a good time to paint the back of your tank. Now, you can actually do that with, uh, with fish in it, believe it or not. Uh, you know, reduce the water level, cover up the tank, uh, you know, get, you know, cover it up nicely, and, um, and, and use non-toxic acrylic paint they have like uh, the kind of paint that they give to kids in school to, to do projects with a non-toxic acrylic and a small roller you know mask it off mask it off uh, use that masking tape to uh, seal off a tarp that that covers the back two-thirds of the tank and you can actually uh, you know lower the tank level down to a third um, and then just get to work and then go ahead, put the tank back in place, and then fill it back up again. And in 24 hours, it'll be totally dry. And uh, so maybe painting the back of a tank, maybe a navy blue, maybe a black, something like that, uh, might be a good time for that. Have you painted the back of your tank? Did you paint it yourself? How did you paint it? Did you use the uh, crayon? Did you use the uh, paint, the spray paint, or did you use the roll-on? You know, there, there's different uh, acrylic paints. The acrylics are nice. I like the acrylics. Uh, I've done them both ways. I've done spray and I've done acrylic. The acrylic is nice because when you, if you decide you want to take it off, it more or less just peels off, and so and it leaves you a, it leaves a clean it leaves a clean background. Uh, the um, the spray ons, I, I think the only way you could take those off would be with a chemical maybe, that might actually harm the seals of the tank. So I don't know. It, it's uh, but. Most people don't change the background of their tank once they, uh, you know, once they do it, they don't change the background. So, um, point number four, something you can do during the lockdown during uh, this time, uh, add those fish that you've been wanting to add because you have the time now to really watch them as they acclimate. This is a good time to add fish because you're not dropping them in and then going to work. Uh, many of you are at home, so you can drop them in and watch, observe how they acclimate. And uh, so, if uh, if James uh, if James is on from the Cichlid Shack, uh, James Largo will be happy to help you if you're looking for some fish. And uh, <laughs> and uh, I also, of course, you know who I recommend. I like James. I like uh, Josh Cunningham at Cunningham Cichlids. If you're on the East Coast, a wonder of cichlids wonderful fish there live fish direct i like what i've gotten from them uh i like um let me see who am i missing imperial tropicals i've gotten good fish from imperial tropicals and uh anyway i know i'm missing somebody but let's see oh dave's dave's rare dave's rare he, he's, he gets great fish and dave dave is like the real deal i met him at the american cichlid association meeting and he's like really into uh you know the breeding and really making sure the fish are a true like a f1 you know really make sure that uh, you know he's really on top of it and he's you know he knows his stuff and so um, i definitely recommend him as well so add some fish it's also a good time if you want to thin your tanks out uh, since you're around if you're around a lot a good time to put some of those fish on craigslist uh, and uh, or maybe take them to a local fish store you know thin out tanks that you've been wanting to thin out uh, sometimes you just have to the fish have put on size uh, you've had a lot of offspring and your tanks are becoming a bit overcrowded and it might be a good time to actually uh, thin things out that's something that I'm going to be doing uh, number five uh, could be a good time to start a new project you know some of you have been thinking about a new project Maybe a, a tank with uh, with that with that deep substrate that I talked about in some of my prior videos, or maybe a planted tank, or maybe a you know a different species type of tank, uh, maybe a small nano, uh, you know a, a smaller tank, 
I made a, a better colony, something like that. This is a great time to do something like that, start a new project. And the good thing about some of these things is that you'll also be supporting some of your local fish, um, you know, some of your local fish places because they need the support right now. I mean, they're suffering. And uh, so calling them up, some of them, I know Nolan's Aquarium, he's actually delivering. So let's say you want some substrate. He'll, he'll you put place the order and, and Nolan's will bring it to your house and they'll deliver. Uh, he'll send you some pictures of fish. If you like them, he'll, buy, you know, he'll package them. He'll drive them over if you're local. And so, um, you know, it, so you know, support these local fish groups. And uh, this is a good time for that. Start up a new project. Buy a cube. You know, and uh, you can drive up and they'll load it in your car for you. And you can do it uh, within whatever regulations you have going on in your area. Uh, <clears throat> uh, number six, spring cleaning. They said clean and organize under your stand and be, and behind your tank. Sometimes behind that stand can be um, a little gross, uh, you know, between all the dust and, and junk that's accumulated over the years. Uh, and uh, sometimes we allow a lot of stuff to, to just get thrown in under the stand and it becomes a, a bit of a yard sale under there. Uh, so it might be a good time to get in there and pull all that, pull everything out, give it a good wipe down you know, vacuum, vacuum behind the tank. And uh, that's definitely something that um, is on my list. Uh, number seven is move fish. And this is something I did recently in a video, a uh, video called Had to Do It. And um, some of you have multiple tanks and you have fish that you know you need to move out from one tank to another. This might be a good time for you to um, actually, actually move some fish. And uh, I have some fish I might be moving into the uh, 150. Not sure exactly which ones. Uh, possibly the hawk out of the 100. And um, we'll see. We'll see. I'd love for that sand diver to put on some size and also move them in here. I also plan on adding uh, several inches of substrate to all of my tanks based on that series of videos that I did recently on using substrate as the primary home for your beneficial bacteria. So that's another project that I might be getting into, but certainly it's a good time to uh, move fish. And uh, there's that big, uh, that big trout that you see there. That's, I got that from Wonder of Cichlids. And that Imperial, who is starting to show blue in the face at the bottom of the screen, and a little yellow in the body. That's a uh, Imperial Tiger. Picked him up from Live Fish Direct. That giant Venusus, the uh, boss of the tank, I grew him out from a baby. That eye biter you see there is uh, from James over at the Cichlid Shack. Once you go shack, you don't go back. All right. So uh, number eight, repair your stand. Uh, some of you have stands that over the, over the years, the door doesn't close right. The door squeaks. The door doesn't fit right when you close it. The hinges are off. Uh, maybe it's picked up some nicks over time. A good time to actually, uh, you know, restain that stand. You know, fix those those cuffs and get those doors so that they open and close correctly. Might be a good time for that, right? And uh, you know, finish the projects. That uh, let me see. I also sort of included in that, uh, it might be a good time to start uh, negotiations with your spouse about uh, adding another tank. Because <laughs> you, have, you have time now where you can get a project done. And uh, in my case, painting a wall, uh, maybe some moving some stuff around, uh, you know, getting, uh, getting some projects done in the house that will give you the, the green light to go ahead and add, add that tank that you've been wanting to add for a while now. So this might be a good time to get into that negotiation because you have the time to do it. And uh, now number nine, and this one I think is important, something we should all do, is take a look at your medications. Not the medications you're taking, the medications for your fish. Uh, take a look at those medications and, and make sure that they're not expired. Make sure that you have medications on hand to treat you know, certainly the most common things. I have Furon 2, I have uh, General Cure, 
I have an ick uh, treatment. I have, you know, I have several things that I keep in stock. Uh, make sure that you have your medications are, are not expired and that you have uh, the right ones in hand. And uh, again, support your local fish store, stock up on your medications. Excuse me. Also, um, you, you can look up Super Cichlids in Delaware. Super Cichlids, Lisa Hober and her family over at Super Cichlids. Great group. Uh, they offer a discount to anyone who uses, I think it's Ben O uh, discount, and you can you can get that discount or free shipping. And the prices, they have a wide range of things. They have medications, they have food, they have equipment, uh, like pumps and things. Uh, super cichlids, I can't recommend them enough. Great group, and uh, they've been going through a little bit of a challenge with some of their tanks. Uh, some of their tanks have, um, have leaked on them. They've had to go through a lot of a lot of flooding in the shop. Good time to order from them. Uh, they need they need the assistance like so many shops do. So super cichlids stock up on uh, medications and uh, and food. Give them a call. Tell them you want the Ben O chart discount, and uh, and they'll they'll hook you up. And um, my last uh, my last tip for you, my last tip for you is to. Um, Take this opportunity. If you have a tank that is um, very heavily decorated, you know you've got a um, you know you've got a big dragon, you've got a castle, you have a, a, a mountain of rocks. Let's say you have Mabuna, you have a ton of caves. Uh, this is a good time to um, you know lift those things up and do a cleaning underneath, and in some cases pull the pull the decor out. And, uh, and do a, a vacuuming, you know, do a good surface vacuuming. Uh, or maybe if you have gravel, maybe even a deeper, a deeper vacuuming. And, uh, and really do that kind of cleaning that you, can't, you, can't norm you don't normally get to because there's so much stuff in the tank that it's impossible to do it. And when I see a, a tank that's very heavily decorated, uh, in my mind, I, by heavily, I mean like a mountain of rocks. For some reason, detritus and waste and, and, and you know, fish poop, it, it somehow manages to work its way no matter how how deep in the substrate, right? I mean, you, you clear out the substrate so you're at the glass or the acrylic bottom, you put the piece down, you build up the substrate around it. I tell you, you lift that up and there's gunk under there. How it gets there, how, it, it worms its way in and it finds a way and when you, when you Gently lift that rock and look. You'll be shocked how much you know, how much junk is in there, how much detritus, waste, poop, whatever is in there, uh, slowly rotting, and uh, you know just good to kind of clean that out. And this might be a good time to actually do that kind of stuff. The kind of thing that we we want to do sometimes we think of during a water during a maintenance or water change, but we don't do it. We go, eh, I'll, I'll catch it next week, and then we don't do it. And so it and it and, and you know six months go by. Do you have any ideas of what this would be a good time to do? If you have any ideas, I want to hear them. Uh, put them in the comments below, and uh, we'll read them and talk about them. <clears throat> so um, let's take a look at what you folks what you folks are talking about in the comments. If I've missed any super chats, I'm sorry. I, I try to not pay attention to the um, to what's going on in the chat uh, you, because it can be very distracting. So, um, but let's go ahead and pull that up now and let's see. Let's see here. Let's see what you folks are talking about. You get into some great conversations, and uh, it's amazing. Maybe the conversations you get into during the sometimes they have nothing to do with what I'm talking about, which I guess is okay. So let's see here.
Javier J, I just can't get the fish I want right now. There are only a handful of online stores that have the fish I'm looking for. Horse face loach, and the prices are outrageous when you count the shipping. Yeah, Javier, you know, um, I can't, I can't, I can't count the times where I've been just about to buy a fish, and uh, you know, I get to that shipping and I and I don't push the button because it's a lot. And the only way I, the only way I've been able to live with that myself has been to um, order fish when I'm going to get when I when I want to get several at one time, and that way it kind of even kind of spreads it out a little bit, and so I pick up several fish at once, unless there's a fish that I feel like I that I really really want. And then I uh, I go ahead and bite the bullet, and so uh, like I did with the uh, you know like I did with 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 the eye biter, I think I just paid full pop for that for the shipping. Let's see here, what else? Hey, Aqua Balls, glad you're here. Filling up the tank sounds like you're in a water change cycle. Doing your water changes, that's good. I'm going back in the comments a little bit, just to scroll back a little bit, see if I missed anything. And Solar King Ronnie, good day everyone. Ben is the man. Thank you, Solar King. Love Saturday chat. I'm going nuts at home. Uh, but out catching striped bass two or three days a week, a very good way to get through this. Get through this nightmare. Nice. Now, are you eating those striped bass, or are you, or are you putting them in a tank? I know some folks will catch, they'll catch these fish and and, and put them in a, uh, you know, in a biotype. You know, I've seen some people do that. You, you, there's a couple famous people on YouTube that catch, catch fish and put them in the in tanks at home. Let's see here. Dave Hibbard looking for a 150 gallon ready for a sump. Anyone selling anything like that or know of anyone selling one? Dave, I've had luck on, on a Craigslist. The one behind me here is a 150. Came with a sump and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, and I picked it up on Craigslist. Check, Craig, check Craigslist. Uh, search under uh, sump, under aquarium sump, under sump, under acrylic tank, under fish tank. Uh, you know, do the, you know, really dive, you know, really uh, diversify your search parameters, and you'll be surprised what might be tucked away in there. And uh, sometimes the deals are crazy. And I would suggest acrylic. If you can get acrylic, get acrylic. Just make sure it has no scratches. And uh, you can also get them buffed out if, if it does have scratches. But the weight difference and the uh, clarity of acrylic. Uh, really can't be uh, can't be beat. And let's see here. I'm moving up here, catching up. Ryan. Ryan, it looks like you're saying that the water softeners didn't make a difference with somebody on a planted tank. Yeah, I just. Uh, you know, water softeners for me. I've I've gone to I've gone to places where they had water softeners. Let's say, like in the hotel, I didn't like the way it, it felt. I mean, it felt to me. I mean, having lived my whole life in a in a in a hard water uh, Southern California environment, uh, it would it would seem like kind of slimy to me. I don't know why. Just just because of what I'm used to. But I didn't like really the feel of of uh, softened water. Let's see. GP, I would spend whatever it costs to save every one of my fish. Yeah, yeah, I mean, certainly, um, I mean, medication is not cheap. And, and if you've ever had to medicate a big tank, like, uh, like the tank behind me, uh, one time I, I, I suspected some parasites, and I had, you know, you start medicating 180 gallons, because when you add in the sump, I have to treat for 180 gallons. And you're going to run through a tremendous amount of uh, meds, and it's going to start adding up very, very quickly. This is why you really want to uh, pull a fish out 
immediately when you suspect that there's something wrong and put them into a smaller tank, uh, not just to isolate the disease, but also uh, it's going to save you a tremendous amount of money in, in medication. But uh, some things like, like, like parasite or ick, things like that, you might as well treat the whole tank because if you see one, I mean, there's a very high probability everybody's got it. Marty from Michigan. Last week I told you about my high ammonia from my tap water. Good news. Don't know why, but my tap water is testing between 0 and 0.25. Well, you know, somebody might have contacted that the water company or, or they might have had some kind of uh, problem at your water source. You really shouldn't be getting ammonia. <laughs> and that's definitely something that I would call, I'd call them on. Chevy Fish, congratulations on 24,000 milestone. Thank you, Chevy Fish. Appreciate it. You were part of that, my friend. You helped. John Larson, one of my fish passes. Normally, I end up getting three to replace him, and it makes me feel better. <laughs> we all grieve in our own way, and uh, <laughs> I get it, though. You know, I get it. It's a, it's a distraction, you know. And, uh, and thank you, thank you, uh, R-E-P-S-E-J-74, Repsej74 for that super chat. Thank you, my friend. Every, every bit helps. I appreciate that. Uh, Kat Saylor, uh, regarding your recent video, um, not deep diving into the substrate to avoid ammonia spikes, don't have sand substrate, just gravel. Should I lightly vacuum the top? The problem with the gravel, of course, is that all that waste can get way down where, where the sand, the sand kind of keeps the, the waste at the top. So you can vacuum like a, like a half inch from the surface and kind of pick everything up that you need to pick up and really truly leave it undisturbed. Uh, you can also have uh, power heads that is sweeping the waste towards the intake uh, of the uh, filter with gravel, I don't know. I mean, I, I, you probably would be okay just to kind of lightly go on on the top of the gravel with your vacuum and not really digging all the way down to the bottom. That might be all right, but I, I think uh, you'd probably be better off if you like the look of gravel. You might be better off um, moving the gravel back and then putting in a, a sand bed and then and then dropping the you know just sort of peppering the gravel over the sand bed and um, doing something like that if you like the look of gravel and that way you can still have the look of gravel on the surface and have a nice sand bed underneath and then you only vacuum to the depth of the gravel without really getting into the sand uh, that might work that could work and that might be what i'll do with um you know that's probably what i'll end up doing with the tank behind me uh, because the um I, I like i like the look of the coral I like the look of the crushed coral. What you see in this tank here is a crushed coral. I love when the fish pick it up and carry it around, you know, and spit it out and carry the chunks around. I like that. Um, so I'll probably keep that. So I'll very gently over time without, because I don't want to really disrupt too much, uh, start to put a sand bed in. And, uh, you know, the fish will mix it up a little bit, I know. I know that's going to happen. Uh, but, uh, but if I put two or three inches of sand in there and then just have the coral you know, just resting on top, it'll probably give me that, that beneficial bacteria uh, sand bed I'm looking for if I don't. And, you know, you, and, and you, don't, you, don't, you don't push your vacuum uh, tube into the sand. That's not something you ever do anyway because you would just pull up a bunch of sand and have a bunch of sand go into your bucket. So anyway, let's see. Let's see what else. Again, I'm going back into into the uh, chat conversation on municipalities adding different kinds of chloramines. We definitely get chloramine here in California, Southern California. We get uh, chloramine. Mike, um, my water is. Uh, I think chloramine is probably the primary way they treat now here in Southern California. Uh, 
let's see here. Wolverine Baller. Wolverine Baller. How <laughs> do people come up with these names? <laughs> That's an interesting one. Wolverine Baller. Uh, ben, watching your channel during lockdown inspired me to start up and cycle three tanks. Been out of the hobby 20 years. I'm back. Welcome back, Wolverine Baller. <laughs> That's awesome. That's very cool. All right. JRO Ortega, I spray paint all my tanks with the uh, Krylon Fusion. Yeah, I've used that. I've used that product. Uh, it was very nice. I mean, it dried really, really nice and even. And it was, as long as you keep that can moving, you know, when you're doing it, it does a really good job. Uh, certainly, if you ever change your mind and want to go to something different, a different color, you're, it's very difficult, almost impossible to remove, but it can be, I guess. And... Uh, But I've done it both ways. Somebody was calling KG Cichlids, uh, John and Lisa. Uh, Kevin, Kevin, how many times do you get that? How many times do people think you're, uh, you're John and Lisa? That's funny. You know, Kevin has a channel. Go to his channel. It's a little bit different from, uh, from, John, and <laughs> from John and Lisa's. It's not PC. That's right. GP has a six foot Universal Rocks 3D background, but prefer plain black. You know, it's funny you say that, GP, because um, I, I do get people commenting on this background behind me that, that they like it and ask where I got it. But probably uh, overall, it is the, the black background 100 that gets the most uh, comments about that's that's my favorite tank. I like that tank. You know, that, that, that seems to be uh, a pretty normal a comment I get from people on that tank, how it's their favorite tank. Joe Harper, I uh, keep extra canister filters on hand just in case one craps out. I use two filters on every aquarium, Eheim 2217s and Fluval 407s. Uh, Joseph, I like, I like that. I like that philosophy. I like that way of working because, uh, yeah, things happen. I've cannibalized. Uh, an extra ca uh, canister where I pulled a part out and used it to uh, to fix, uh, you know, so it's good to have those extra extra things around. Uh, certainly affordable if you're using something like uh, Sun Suns. It uh, gets pretty expensive if, if you're in the Eheim. The Eheim canisters can be very expensive. Fluvals can be very expensive. But, um, you know, one time that, sh that you have a breakdown, you're able to fix it. It was definitely worth the investment instead of losing all your fish. So that's a, that's a great way to do, to do things. I like the redundancy, which is why I'm considering adding that 704 to the uh, 100, just to have that extra filtration because of the extra bio load and also to have the backup. Let's see, I'm catching up here with the comments. Neil Gracemark. The one thing on my list is to do nothing but sit and watch and enjoy the fish. I do not do that enough. Well, Neil, I, I, I think that's great. I think that's great, you know? I mean, for some of us, it'll be an opportunity to get things done for uh, projects. For others, I mean, there's nothing wrong. I mean, we're, we're, we're usually in such a hurry to go places, right? Go to work, do something with the family, do this, do that, obligations. And uh, it is very, very nice just to sit down and look at your fish. And I, I love doing that. I totally love doing it. My morning coffee very often is sitting on this stool I have in front of my, uh, in front of my 100 and in front of my 60. And uh, that's how I have my coffee. And I haven't fed them yet. So every time I bring the coffee cup to my mouth, they all go to the, that part of the tank and then I bring the coffee cup down and they all go away and I bring the coffee cup back up, they all come back. <laughs> One of the things I like about cichlids, African cichlids in particular, is how interactive they are. They're very interactive, they're very, uh, they're not really afraid unless you do something, uh, unless you do something that startles them, right? Or unless there's a big fish 
chasing them around, which seems to be going on in, in the tank behind me. Okay, let's see. I think I'm catching up. Candy, thank you so much for sharing all those links to those uh, fish providers. Very nice of you to do that. Candy is really on top of things. She's got to be one of the uh, best uh, moderators on YouTube for sure. Her and, and Denny and GP and Kevin do a great job. And I don't know if you notice sometimes that a comment gets deleted. Uh, that's usually because they've made a judgment that somebody is uh, saying something that isn't polite or is a... Uh, possibly a troll, and they're very, very good at monitoring that kind of stuff, and I really appreciate it. So let's see here. If I'm missing your comment, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to get through so much. And, uh, boy, you guys are really chatty today. I love it. Okay, Candy is the best, plural singularity. I agree. Uh, Mary Hughes, I'd like to ask a few questions, but I don't want to be redundant. Well, Mary, here's your opportunity. What's your question? If Mary Hughes is still in the chat, what's your question, Mary? Let, let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look at it. If you have some questions, go ahead and put them in. And uh, as GP says, Mary, you can always ask any question here one of the things I love about the uh, this this particular live stream, and also of course the uh, the cichlids and uh, the the Ben O Cichlid Facebook page, is that we work real hard to keep those areas uh, troll free and safe, so that any question can be asked. Uh, sometimes new fish keepers ask questions that for an experienced fish keeper they go, "Oh my God," you don't get that kind of reaction at those places because we know that there are people who are just starting off. And so there's no real stupid question. So, uh, you know, feel free to ask your questions. And uh, let's see here. Tech for Techs looking slick today, Ben. <laughs> I was able to get a black market underground haircut. And I'm not gonna tell you how I, how I did it because they'll scramble the choppers and they'll send the SWAT squad, but I was able to get a uh, underground haircut. <laughs> Can you imagine having to say that? Okay, let's see here. In the 20 gallon tank as they are teeny, let me see here. Mary, you have a Jaguar, a Dovi, and a Red Devil, and Oscars, two of each, and a 20. Uh, you need to start putting a lot of money aside. Okay, so you're not planning on keeping them for long. Okay, yeah, because you're going to have a Battle Royale pretty soon. And it might not, it might be sooner than you think. And it might happen while you're sleeping. So um, you have probably the... Uh, Yeah, you you know you, you have probably the uh, probably the mo one of the most dangerous combinations of fish I've probably ever seen, and I would uh, and they're, they're beautiful fish, but uh, you know you can make an argument for each one of those needing their own tank at some point. I mean, even a female having a female in there uh, is going to uh, is going to uh, be dangerous if you're trying to breed let's say and just have a male and a female sometimes the females get uh, worked over so um, I would uh, yeah I would I would start making arrangements to uh, go into a bigger tank go into a bigger tank and uh, get those get those fish farmed out because uh, you've got you've got some violence in your future uh, basically a battle royale Let's see here. 
Mezine Aman. Mezane Aman, thank you for an excellent and interesting topic. Learn so much from your videos. Jonathan in Cape Town, South Africa, looking forward to the next video. Very cool. Thank you for that. I love the encouragement. That's the kind of stuff that keeps me going. How's the weather where you are, Candy? That's L Flowers asking about the weather for Candy. How is the weather up there, Candy? Let's see here. I went back a little bit here. Cat Sailor, Candy Makes Taking Notes so much easier with the links that she posts. Very true. And she's right on top of that. I don't know how fast what she does to get those links so quickly. I don't think I could get them out that quickly. Has anyone painted the back of an acrylic tank? You know, sometimes acrylic tanks come pre-colored, but I think if you check um, certain uh, paints th that are they're, they're, they'll work on acrylic, uh, you're going to have to check that out. I imagine some of the sprays might be a good place to uh, to look. A uh, Darren. Belverstone, hi Ben, new to your chat, over here in, in uh, Great Britain, some great tips that I'm getting, keep up the good work. Hey Darren, hope things are going well there in uh, your part of the world. I hope the uh, the curve is flattening, as they say, about the COVID-19 up there, and life is returning to some degree of normalcy in Great Britain, UK in general. We have a lot of UK and Australia uh, UK and Australia seem to be the two that uh, watch from abroad the most. All right. Yeah, somebody's recommending that Mary keep at least a 100. You know, I think a 100 might be too small. Um, uh, eventually, I mean, a Dovi, a Dovi, I've seen Dovi's in 300 gallon tanks and they look like they're they're almost it's almost too i mean they're, they're so fast they're so aggressive they attack the glass um yeah definitely but she's not planning on keeping them for long so she's just growing them out so they're uh you know but a 120 yeah but at the same time mary you can't really keep those guys together they're going to tear each other apart i think you you have really the you you have apex apex predators uh these are fish you know these are the kind of fish that they have to they have to run the table they have to be in charge uh, of what's going on and uh and and so you have several fish and they all want to be the apex they all want to be in charge and unless you put dividers in the tank uh they're going to battle it out because they're going to see the entire tank as their territory so um let's see here anyway it's uh you know, when I picked up, when I, when I put together a few Nimbochromis uh, in the tank behind me, just a few Nimbochromis, like a, a Fusco, and I don't know if he's on, there's the Venusis chasing somebody, the boss of the tank, probably pushing around 10 inches. But when I put him together with a uh, Fusco, another member of the Nimbochromis family, and uh, there's also a Living Stone Eye in there, and uh, everybody was telling me, my God, you know, that you're, you're, you're headed for a battle royale. Uh, they're not going to be able to get along. And, I, and there have been moments. But interestingly enough, the, uh, the Venusis has had the hardest time or the biggest challenges from the eye biter. Uh, the Fusco stays out of his way and the Living Stone Eye stays out of his way. So um, it, it's just been surprising to me that the Nimbochromis have not been getting, there's the Fusco being chased by the eye biter. The, the Fusco is just below the eye biter in the pecking order. So you have the, uh, and at one point, the, the trout was actually chasing the eye biter. Then the eye biter turned the tables on him and started chasing the trout. So the trout was making a, a push for the number two position, but uh, it didn't last too long. But the undisputed number one is that, uh, is that uh, Venusis that you see right there. So at any rate, we are on the hour, 
and I want to thank all of you for being part of this live stream. I enjoy the heck out of it, and uh, not sure about next week. I'll, I'll try and do one possibly from the shore, uh, outside. Uh, it could be fun, and uh, I'll put the little uh, cone on the the cone on the mic so we don't get a lot of wind noise, and maybe we'll be broadcasting from the beach next week. We'll see. If it's something you'd like to see, go ahead and and let me know in the chat if you want to see a live stream from a from a, a beach setting without a tank behind me, and I'll go ahead and uh, I'll take the lighting, I'll take the I'll take the equipment with me, and I'll give you a live stream from the shore if that's something you'd like to see. And uh, otherwise, check out the upcoming videos. Uh, we have another installment tomorrow with Paul the Inventory King and uh, on, on major mistakes by major YouTubers. And then on Tuesday, uh, we have Zenzo Tozawa's Tanks uh, with his major mistakes for major YouTubers. All right. So uh, thank you so much for, uh, for tuning in. Be sure to hit the, hit the like. Uh, be sure to sub, hit the bell. And uh, I'll see you next Saturday. And that's all for me. Thank you, folks. You are the best. You rock. I really do mean that. And goodbye for now.